Hello everyone, uh, welcome to today's webinar on pre-stress concrete design of bridges to Eurocodes. Today we'll be going through some important aspects of uh, pre-stress concrete bridge design using a finite element software, Midas Civil. We'll look at some modeling aspects including construction stage modeling and how to interpret uh, design uh, stresses and, and, uh, and subsequently checking them as per ULS and SLS. Today we'll be covering the following topics uh, for the design of uh, pre-stress concrete bridges. Starting with uh, the first uh, topic today which is modeling of pre-stress precast bridges. So the subcategory, the first subcategory is the pre-tensioned precast girder bridges. In the, as the name suggests, uh, in these type of bridges, the the girders or the precast uh, girders are cast in in a yard and then the pre-stressing is done before the concrete is poured so they are the strands are already stressed and as soon as concrete attains a minimum strength uh, say seven days strength it is then uh, the strands are then cut and forces are transferred to the concrete now the way we model them in the software is uh, we consider an effective section that is a slab section along with the main girder as one longitudinal beam. Then the transverse elements represent the transverse bending of the slab. So it will be basically uh, center to center distance of the, the, the transverse elements which represent um, the width of the, the element in the transverse direction. Okay, so let's have a look at one of the models that we have uh, sh shown here, which is a U-beam type of bridge. There can be several other precast girder bridges, including M-beam, Y-beam, T-beam, etc. Right, so this is an example of a two-span integral U-beam U-girder bridge, precast U-girder bridge. So let's have a look at how the sections have been defined so first of all uh, the sections have been defined as a value type section so this beam this uh, u-beam um, was defined using the SPC file which is section property calculator and uh, the properties were automatically calculated then for design purpose thickness of the top flange and bottom flange and some other data like the width of the soffit and the height of the girder they have to be inputted over here so that the software assumes the thickness for shear and torsion check correctly then uh, we need to define a composite section which will involve uh, addition of, of, of an effective slab running on top of this uh, U-beam section. So we define the slab dimensions and the material properties for, um, for calculating the, the, the equivalent, uh, equivalent cross-section properties of the combined slab and girder. Okay, then uh, for defining the construction stages as we have covered in previous uh, webinars, uh, you define structure groups, boundary groups and load groups and this is how and, and you then activate them accordingly in different stages so just to show you how it has been done over here so stage one involves um, all the precast girders and the abutment and piers in place now you notice there is some beam and releases used which is basically to represent simply supported condition of the beams when they are first placed so so the moment releases have been applied on uh, on either ends of of a beam precast beam okay and right now sulfate and pretension is acting on the beam so if i just display the pretension forces okay so just zooming in slightly you'll be able to see the strands okay now how do we define these uh, strands first of all so there are two ways uh, in Midas uh, that we can use 
first way is that since this is a precast uh, date i mean a precast standard precast section so the software has got built-in feature for automatically assigning the pre-stressing tendon layout a strand layout for such type of bridges so we get those in tendon template so all we have to do is select the girder that we are interested in so let me just undisplay this okay so suppose I select this much portion I mean ideally I will be selecting the entire beam um, so and, and I go to tendon template Just switching on to the base mode. And right. Right. So we can see it has automatically identified the section shape. Now all you have to do is auto generate, which will ask you for entering the the type of the section, uh, the precast beam. So I just select a say a W type of section and W11 and click OK and thus it gives you a full tendon layout which we can further select if we don't want few tendons uh, few strands we can just select them and delete okay so or we can move them so if I want to move this one move or copy maybe let's say uh, 0.2 meters move so it will move by that much distance okay so all these type of variations we can do we can even add uh, uh, some other profiles extra profiles here using different types of uh, profile curves available in the software so that's one way the other way is to select the uh, elements that represent a beam a precast beam and just directly defining the tendons into it so there is a tendon profile option which we, with, with which you can do that okay so for each tendon profile you can define the x y z coordinates number of tendons for that profile so you can club literally club multiple profiles and uh, apply them at the centroid effective centroid of the of the tendons Okay, now for each tendon profile, the properties have to be defined. So I'll be coming in uh, onto the properties a little bit later. How to define the pre-stress properties, which will include in the, the losses and everything. Okay, so stage one includes only uh, pre-stress concrete girders, pre-tension girders, uh, which are simply supported. Stage two will include uh, the, some wet concrete loads. So concrete has been poured now. So here just for simplicity we have assumed that the concrete is poured at one go so it's a small span and uh, then the stage 3 is where it becomes composite so everything is now rigidly connected we have removed the moment releases and we defined a composite section for construction stage which will make sure that uh, the correct properties are used in, in, a, in the right stage so stage 1 we have only part 1 which is the girder stage 3 we have the composite slab on it so part 2 which is the slab okay, if you want you can change the stiffness of the slab by defining a stiffness scale factor over here okay so that's how we uh, typically define uh, the construction stages and the model for a, comp a composite precast pre-stress pre bridge Similarly, we can do the same thing for a post uh, an eye girder bridge. Okay, so this is an example of an eye girder bridge, which is typically like 12, 12 meter wide, 3 meter center to center that each girder is placed. And this is an example of a post tension concrete uh, bridge. So I'll just display the settings. So coming on to post tensioning post tension girder bridges uh, may be modeled as either line or grillage or sometimes at plate models uh, again the if it is a grillage model then the main girders with effective slab will be modeled as composite sections which includes the longitudinal post tensioning 
Slab transverse bending may be modeled as uh, transverse elements in the grillage. Sometimes you may also have transverse post tensioning in the text, so that can also be represented in the grillage by putting in a profile in the transverse direction for the tendon. Line models are typically used for box cutter viaducts, box cutter type of structure. So as you can see on the right side, this is a balance cantilever bridge uh, for a typical metro project. Um, and on the left side is, a, is an example of a longitudinal and transverse pre stressing where the spine, the central spine is longitudinally, longitudinally pre stressed, post tension. And the transverse wings or ribs, you can say, they are attached to spine by the use of transverse pre stressing on, in the slab. Okay, so it's an interesting example of a combination of both longitudinal and transverse pre stressing. So let's have a look at the models to see how how it's been modeled. So that's the curved geometry for the spine type of structure, spine and wing type of structure. Okay, so here what we have done is uh, define the central beam as central spine beam as line elements. Okay, and uh, the transverse wings as again beam elements so if I just play the transverse wings so we call them ribs here so they are highlighted over here as line elements and the rest of the slab in order to in, in, in order to just uh, not consider effective width separately for the shear lag effects we have uh, modeled the slab as plate element so it's uh, it's not exactly a grillage model but rather a plate uh, a, a, a full fledged plate model uh, at least for the slab okay uh, now for post tensioning uh, also construction stage is very important um, so here again we have defined few construction stages so stage 1 includes only the only the simply supported uh, spine stage 2 is where the wings are now attached so so transverse pre stressing comes into picture stage 3 is where concrete is being filled so we have wet concrete load applied and stage 4 which is like uh, the slab becomes composite so the entire slab is acting the stiffness of the slab is now acting together with the spine beam and then there are the loads that we apply like uh, parapet loads and uh, and and surfacing loads etc another type of example will be uh, will be a, a box cutter viaduct of uh, like balance cantilever structure okay so this is the line beam model uh, all all the post tension box girders are modeled as line beam elements here. Um, some of the elements uh, that, are, that are modeled as 2D plate elements are basically the pile cap representing the pile cap and uh, a uniform distribution in the piles. So a good soil structure and traction can be assumed in this type of structure. Okay, so now moving on to the next bit is the basis of design so our today's focus will be mostly on design uh, for all other ma modeling aspects uh, please refer to previous webinars on mod which are geared more to modeling okay so basis of design uh, is just like a reinforced concrete uh, design section design where we have uh, the concrete area then the reinforcement in both compression and tension zones okay, and the only addition is a pre-stressing um, Pre, pre pre stressing duct here so we we are assuming a rectangular stress distribution for concrete eurocode gives parabolic rectangular pile and uh, and curvilinear uh, type of uh, distribution of uh, stresses stress strain of concrete so as you can see this is the fs represents these uh, the reinforcement forces fc is the compressive force in concrete fp is the pre stressing force tensile force so once we generate have a stress strain diagram like this uh, then we use the strain compatibility approach 
so we assume that concrete has achieved its uh, maximum compressive limit of strain and correspondingly we assume the neutral axis at different heights and according to that we get some strain values okay the, uh, for for concrete for for the strain value at the level of uh, uh, pre stressing we have to be um, we have to make sure that uh, whatever strain value we, we are getting from this type of uh, variation we have to add it with the pre strain value of uh, of the pre stress uh, tendon because the pre stress tendon was already stressed up and already some extension has happened before that needs to be added up so the total forces uh, at this level uh, that is at the pre stress level will be calculated based on the total strain which is the strain due to this compatibility plus strain which was already there pre strain value okay right. let's move on to material properties uh, that are used for pre stress concrete design so similar to reinforced concrete we have uh, a full table in euro code for the different properties of concrete as discussed just uh, the previous slide parabolic rectangular or bilinear type of distribution assumed for concrete stress strain we will be assuming rectangular stress strain block for simplicity and reinforcement and pre-stressing both follow a, 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 a elastoplastic type of model uh, or in some cases a bilinear model uh, which is uh, idealized which is I, that is reduced by a certain factor which are mentioned over here okay so time dependent properties of concrete now for pre stress concrete structures this is of a, a very important uh, uh, very this is very important to uh, to note because creep and shrinkage and compressive strain gain of concrete are are phenomena which will um, which will determine the pre stress forces over time so there are two ways uh, the results will be affected first is that the modulus of concrete keeps changing with time so here we have the mean modulus of concrete which is calculated from the mean compressive strength of concrete and with time it will follow a graph like this and it will lead to change in the modulus of concrete and when modulus of concrete changes the deflections will change strain values will change as per compatibility uh, to maintain strain compatibility the strain in pre-stress uh, strands will change as a result you will have losses in pre-stress uh, strands Similarly, creep uh, due to permanent stresses, there will be some deformations, uh, creep deformations with time. Now, creep deformations depend on various factors like they will depend on the type of cement that is being used. So, S, N or R type of cement which is slow, normal or rapid setting cement. Uh, and it will depend on the notional, uh, notational size of the member which is 2 times upon area divided by perimeter that is the exposed area and perimeter of a section. Uh, and also of course depends on the time uh, which is the age of the loading so so on it will based on these factors a creep coefficient is then defined this creep coefficient will uh, be multiplied with the existing strain value and it will give you the final strain due, due to creep similarly shrinkage is also a time dependent phenomena which uh, which has basically two parts drying and autogenous autogenous is the one which happens instantly due to hydration of concrete drying shrinkage takes time uh, again it depends on the notational size of the member and uh, and yes so similar to the creep calculation we can calculate uh, uh, the shrinkage strain over time okay so let me just go back to the software and show you how you can apply this type of uh, properties so in the properties there is creep and shrinkage we define uh, the, the creep and shrinkage property so you can select either CBFIP or European standard both are similar uh, for defining creep and shrinkage so you select type of cement type of the code uh, part part 2 or part 1 uh, and age of concrete at the beginning of shrinkage so age of loading basically and then you can see the graph that will be followed for a creep coefficient definition over time similarly we define compressive strength so here we select say euro code and we define the overall that is mean mean compressive strength of concrete 
at the age of 28 days so that will let's say it's a 40 for m uh, sorry c40 concrete so you will have uh, 48 48 mpa defined as the mean compressive strength this is the graph that will be followed for compressive strength gain so modulus of con modulus of elasticity will change over time after defining these two functions we then link these two functions with the correct material so like over here we have defined two functions one for creep and one for compressive strength gain and have uh, applied it to this material c40 now while we do that anything and everything that is being applied with this material c40 will be uh, considering the time dependent effect okay so in our analysis we have an option to consider or not consider this time effect so construction stage analysis gives us that option that we whether we want to include the time dependent effect or not for so for preliminary analysis we can save time by checking off this option just to get an idea of what kind of stresses we are getting without the creep and shrinkage effect okay so just to have uh, a brief idea about how the construction is happening over in this particular structure so it's basically balanced cantilever type of construction okay all right so the next slide uh, talks about the pre-stress losses so there are six types of pre-stress losses and categorized into two main two main sections first type of loss is immediate so uh, again immediate loss can be either elastic shortening friction or anchorage slip now elastic shortening losses happen generally in pre-tensioned um, pre-tensioned uh, concrete because uh, the concrete has the, as the concrete gains strength and as it shortens um, based on the dead load supplied on the concrete beam the it, it it takes the pre stressing uh, pre stressing strand also with it as it shortens so when you are compressing the concrete uh, using pre stressing it shortens as well as the strand because of strain compatibility shortens and hence you have loss in the pre stress value so it's fairly straightforward calculating this loss based on this formula similarly friction loss occurs due to two reasons it can be a cur curvature in the in the profile so in case of post-tension structures, it's more uh, valid for post-tension type of uh, concrete where you have uh, a, a, a tapered or, or, or a curved profile. So that will result in the uh, resolution of the, uh, of the pre-stressing force into two components, vertical and horizontal component. The vertical component will induce a friction force on uh, on the free sliding pole, uh, behavior of the uh, on the f on the freely uh, held uh, pre-stressing strand, uh, and there is another uh, effect that can be attributed to this friction loss, which is wobble friction. This happens mostly in the it happens in the unbonded uh, uh, tendon. So due to the unbonded tendon, there is uh, some voids in the duct, so the strand can be a strand can get dislocated in certain way and can further add to the friction okay anchorage loss uh, on the other hand are caused at the anchorage locations after the um, so after after the concrete has been poured and then we start applying the pre-stressing force uh, in post tension uh, and the moment the pre-stressing force is being applied and we have uh, kind of uh, cut the Stress, uh, cut, cut at the cut the strands at the jacking location there, there is a sudden slip at the ends which is called the anchorage which it results in the anchorage loss however this anchorage loss is only carried forward up to a certain length which is called a setting length which is calculated as per this uh, this equation and beyond that anchorage loss is negligible for time dependent losses uh, there are creep loss which is because of the deformation of concrete concrete may shorten or elongate and along with it it will change the length of the pre-stressing steel uh, which will lead to loss of forces pre-stressing forces similarly shrinkage loss uh, will 
lead to shrinkage in concrete as well as uh, the shortening of the strand and correspondingly the uh, the stresses will be lost uh, with the pre stressing stresses will be lost relaxation loss uh, because of it's similar to the creep behavior in concrete but this happens in steel so if steel is um, stressed out for a longer time it will uh, it will be affected by relaxation loss um, and that has to be also considered in our pre-stress loss analysis so how do we do that in the in the software we have uh, we have a feature called tendon property over in Midas uh, which we can use so it, you can go to loads pre-stress and uh, tendon property so just add a tendon if you want to so just name it one so tendon so choose internal pre tension post tension or external okay. in Midas uh, you can assume external tendon to behave as an uh, as a internal post tension tendon by using this uh, the cable moment magnifier which is just an overstress factor uh, of generally it is of 100 MPa so if you apply 100 MPa overstress factor you can assume uh, that and design the uh, section for moment resistance um, by assuming it just like an internal post tension section so internal pre tension uh, we define the material so it's let's say tendon the total tendon area is defined as a strand type so it's a 15 millimeter strand and the number of strands that you have in one tendon so that you apply and the relaxation coefficient is defined again as per code as per euro code whether it is ordinary low or hot roll type of steel okay and thus uh, these prob th thus, thus uh, the losses will be considered so here if you see the losses when you have post tension you have anchorage slip and friction loss curvature and wobble friction so these have to be entered so that immediate loss can be considered due to post tensioning as well as pre tensioning uh, if you are talking about elastic shortening. Okay. Creep and shrinkage losses are calculated automatically by the software because we have defined creep and shrinkage function previously. Okay, Now coming to segmental construction. So there are two ways of construction that we have covered over here. First is the full staging method of construction where you have the staging constructed and then the beam support it acts as a support for the entire bridge till the time of construction so in this particular uh, example you have a spine beam which is being constructed on full stage and it is then uh, we, i mean then we um, construct the transverse uh, transverse deck elements transverse uh, grillage elements and then concrete is finally poured to make it fully composite so this entire thing happens when the this is full staged um, we have the formwork below acting below this bridge then the other ways can be a balanced cantilever construction where you have uh, two central piers and uh, the, <coughs> the segments are being cast well, either it can be cast uh, in situ or it can be precast, but the segments are actually installed in a balanced fashion on either ends of the pier. So you can see in the this first video that how in a balanced form the construction is going on. Finally, they stitch here at the end. This is called the key segment. Okay, so sometimes the key segment will have to be aligned properly, so the jacking force needs to be applied in opposite direction in these two. Um, just th these two adjacent uh, elements which are coming from the two different piers okay so coming on to the main uh, topic for today which is the ULS checks and SLS checks so first we'll cover the ultimate limit state checks that we perform on pre-stress concrete bridges okay so the uh, the flow chart is given here shown here how the pre uh, the moment of resistance is calculated uh, this is the same diagram which we were using in the pieces of design so first of all we assume a neutral axis depth so based on that based on the triangular stress distribution we can calculate fc which is concrete force 
and correspondingly based on the strain that uh, that is being um, I mean applied at the reinforcement level we can calculate the stresses and the forces in the reinforcement and tendon okay now when we are considering the forces in the tendon uh, as i mentioned before we include the total strain value which is strain in concrete strain in the ring uh, the pre-stressing steel due to strain compatibility that is concrete achieving maximum uh, compressive uh, limit and uh, that has to be added with the pre-strain value which is the strain already existing in in the pre-stressing uh, tendon because of uh, previous pre-stressing and in case of extra externally pre-stressed uh, bridges that is external pre-stressed tendon uh, we apply a overstress factor so that it can be treated as an internal tendon while designing the section okay so using all these parameters we can we can come to the conclusion uh, on a particular neutral axis when the total compression force equals the total tension force on either side of the neutral axis so once this is confirmed that means that is the neutral axis depth and when the neutral axis depth is calculated we can take the lever arm from the different forces and calculate the bending moment bending moment resistance okay similarly shear resistance uh, again uh, it's a simple uh, calculation first of all we calculate the concrete capacity concrete shear capacity of the concrete so that has two ways of doing that first thing is that if the concrete is cracked in flexure uh, then we check the shear shear force in this manner the first equation is used so to check whether the concrete is cracked or not we i mean cracked in flexure or not we compare it with the flexural limit uh, tension limit of concrete um, then uh, if the concrete is not cracked in flexure that is it's a shear ten pure tension case uh, in shear in that case we cut through a given cross section and calculate the shear stress at that particular cross section. So, so I B upon S, S is basically the first moment of area which we use for calculating shear flow um, at a at a particular level in the structure in the in the section. So here also we cal calculate that kind of a shear flow and convert it into a sh shear force, the total shear force. Um, this will act as a shear resistance for due to the concrete alone. Now, if by any chance your uh, applied shear design shear is greater than VRDC, which is the concrete capacity, then we need to calculate the vertical shear reinforcement or the inclined shear reinforcement, which is the shear stirrups. So, uh, the uh, the VRDS, which is the steel. Uh, contribution of the shear resistance is calculated as per this value where theta is the strut angle the cot theta value varies from 1 to 2.5 so it cannot be more than 2.5 or less than 1 between these values we can um, we can uh, play around uh, this particular equation is based on uh, on the strut tie analogy of uh, shear so you have a compression strut and a tension tension tie okay um, the tension tie can be inclined or not inclined depending on how we have defined the stirrups so mostly they are vertical stirrups so theta value is cal, cal uh, is is uh, iterated so if we increase the uh, if we decrease the theta then we end up with uh, um, with a larger value of vrds but in that case we have to make sure that VRDS should not ex uh, exceed VRD max which is the maximum shear resistance capacity of uh, the section which is shown here okay and then once we calculate the required VRDS we need to calculate the area of steel right so I mean either way you can do either we apply the area of steel shear shear stirrups first and then we calculate VRDS and then see if it's satisfying or not okay the one only th uh, thing about this method a strut strut tie uh, method is that uh, once you have uh, satisfied this uh, vrds requirement you have to also check for the tension uh, tension tie uh, equilibrium so we have converted the forces in the principal directions 
but the ten, uh, tension in the tension tie uh, at the reinforcement level needs to be matched so that tension is calculated as per delta ftt okay and this value should be less than or equal to uh, the uh, the difference between the the moment of resistance and the applied moment divided by the lever arm okay so um, that that will allow us to have a residual uh, residual uh, force in the tie which will balance out the extra tension generated due to strut tie model okay now this particular check is not done by the software automatically which is the calculation of delta f which is uh, um, which which is important for strut tie model so that uh, uh, user needs to be careful about uh, using manual methods for checking this particular thing okay and then we have another check torsion resistance so there can be two types of section open or closed in in terms of uh, torsion resistance uh, this particular equation should be satisfied which is a combined torsion and shear check uh, TED is calculated from the analysis, TRD max is calculated from this particular equation. Again, theta is the strut angle. Then we calculate the required transverse steel and required longitudinal steel, which is used to resist this particular torsion. So that is uh, AST, which is the required transverse steel. ST is the spacing of the transverse steel. And similarly, uh, ASL which is the area of the longitudinal steel which can also be calculated over here then few limits are also given for spacing of these type of uh, I mean these reinforcement that we are calculating okay so before we go to the serviceability checks let's get back to the software and see how for different types of uh, bridges pre-tension and post-tension bridges uh, these parameters are being applied like ULS check parameters so let's start with this uh, particular one, which is the balance cantilever structure. So first of all, we need to define some reinforcement uh, if longitudinal and transverse because for the shear check, they will be required. For bending, it may not be governing because you have uh, most of the cases pre-stressing tends to take care of the bending moment of resistance as well. But still we'll use utilize that so we go to properties section manager and reinforcement select a particular uh, section and uh, start defining the reinforcement so this is how the reinforcement will be defined uh, and then we define shear reinforcement for this particular section so shear reinforcement will be the pitch uh, diagonal reinforcement which is pitch is being the spacing of the stirrups spacing of the links angle we keep it as 90 degrees and aw which is the area of the stirrup so whether it is four legged or six legged that you have to enter over here then torsion and for torsion check uh, there are some other parameters like the area of steel longitudinal steel resisting torsion area of the um, of the of the total stirrups that are resisting torsion uh, and compare it with the compare it with the val uh, I mean the values given in uh, the shear resistance uh, to to get the uh, to get the check whether tor whether the longitudinal and, and transverse uh, rebars are sufficient for torsion or not okay uh, one thing to be careful over here for torsion check is that the cover thickness uh, for a closed section that should be equal to uh, that should be equal to thickness divided by two that is half of the thickness because as per euro code we consider the central line of the web and the flange uh, for calculating the effective area and perimeter for resisting torsion okay so come let's take another example of uh, this time a pretensioned uh, structure that's a pretension type of structure here also we define the same thing so this is slightly different because it's a uh, composite steel so we define we can define the uh, the reinforcement in both the beam and the uh, i mean and the slab 
so sh we can define longitudinal reinforcement just like we did previously and shear enforcement so shear enforcement diagonal reinforcement over here and torsional reinforcement can be also defined okay now let's try to run um, the design process so for any type of pre-stressed concrete design we need to first generate load combination that has to be generated in the concrete design tab so we define ULS and SLS case uh, define them as uh, strength or serviceability so just uh, I'll go back to the post CS mode okay so in the load combination you can see various combinations I've used uh, made other combinations inactive which are not required just kept the few ones like strength and serviceability okay and then we go to PSC option so in order for the section to be designed as a PSC section whether it is pre-tension or post-tension the first thing you have to make sure is that material should be concrete so it should be a concrete material so type of design is concrete and the next thing is that it sh uh, all the pre-stressing uh, cables uh, should be inputted properly and the, the pre-stressing force should be applied so the way pre-stressing force is applied in the software is using loads pre-stress and there's an option saying tendon pre-stress where you just select a particular tendon you have defined and uh, define the jacking force or stress so jacking stress can be some value and whether it is jacked from one end or both ends you can define that okay so once the stresses have been uh, once the tendons have been defined and the loads have been applied on the tendons uh, pre-stress loads this internally each tendon profile will be converted into an external uh, I mean uh, a load acting on the elements and based on that based on the direction of the load which will depend on the profile of the tendon we get different types of tendon forces so for each construction stage we can actually visual visualize the stresses or forces due to tendons so if I draw the bending moment diagram so let's say we are in stage number 10 define tendon primary we get some sort of bending moment diagram and we have to check the stresses at each stage 2 so so that they do not exceed the tensile limit that we have set for a per, for a particular project so usually if it's a cast in c2 type of construction we do allow uh, we do allow, allow some uh, part of tension to occur during construction as well as in service loads uh, but we need to check that the crack width in such cases should be in limit uh, for precast type of segmental construction uh, we try to make sure that there is no tension allowed because the precast segments uh, I mean the, the, the precast segments if they are uh, if they are connected using uh, unbonded type of tendons in that case uh, we need to make sure that uh, we have we don't allow any tension between the segments if it's a bonded tendon then uh, because of that uh, because of the bond bond bonded uh, bond between the tendon and the concrete uh, it can still carry a bit of tension okay so this thing has to be taken care uh, even in case of extra ex external pre-stress tendons um, we have to be make sure that stresses that we calculate in each construction stage should be in the limit okay so once load combinations have been defined uh, then we go to PSC uh, euro code parameters so we set up the parameters which is uh, right so I'll just move on to post CS over here parameters uh, for this type of design so pre-stressing steel is trans uh, design parameters we can set for different uh, different fa factors for different types of checks we can specify from here or just select British National Annex and it will do that automatically 
uh, ultimate limit state and serviceability limit states all checks are selected then we need to define uh, the position for the design so design position will be uh, you can define the entire girder the full girder and say this is the position these are all the elements that you want to check for then serviceability combination type which is uh, say you have couple of uh, a few serviceability combinations defined you can put them in the frequent or characteristic category so characteristic combination will be used for checking stress limitation and frequent you will be used for crack width check then exposure class for crack width check uh, we select all the pre stress concrete elements set the exposure class which is basically from defined from the durability of the concrete and then we run the design so after running the design we get this kind of table which gives you a summary of uh, the bending moment resistance uh, mo applied moment and the moment of resistance and the ratio utilization ratio and what kind of pre-stressing steel we have used similarly shear strength will show the shear capacity of the section concrete sh capa shear capacity steel uh, shear resistance and vrd max And then finally combined shear and torsion that again will give you the TRD max and VRD max uh, so we satisfy the equations that we define in the slides to get this value okay. um, again uh, as covered in the previous webinars on composite steel type of bridges here also you need to set the material properties correctly so if in, during the analysis you have set any user defined material then it has to be changed over here we define the correct strength of concrete grade of steel that we are going to use for reinforcement as well as for uh, for the stirrups the sub sub rebars okay uh, once we generate the excel report we get something like this in excel so we get the full calculation as we mentioned before the the iteration for calculating neutral axis depth C by T ratio should be 1 so that's what we have over here and then MRD is calculated okay let's move on to the another uh, type of uh, another example this time of uh, external pre-stress structure so in the external pre-stress structure like this uh, we have um, model the spine beam separately okay so spine beam has been modeled as PSC line beam type of section uh, this is defined as a value type section so uh, we have to make sure that all the thicknesses for web and everything is uh, is entered manually so that the software calculates the width the thickness of the web and all uh, correctly for a shear and torsion check again we have to input the exposure class etc all these values and then finally we can extract the uh, the flexure strength so remember I mentioned that for external pre-stress section because this is an external pre-stressed uh, structure okay so we have got all the tendons are external pre-stressed it's a segmental construction and the only internal tendons <coughs> sorry the only internal tendons that are there in this particular bridge uh, are the transverse tendons flat ducts have been used in the slab so for design of those type of uh, sections uh, we have to extract the results from here manually and then put it in uh, some excel sheet because for transverse design transverse uh, design it uh, we need to be careful because what kind of effective width we are going to use for the transverse uh, transverse elements okay so uh, we can take a help of a PSC result diagram which is very handy because it gives you a complete uh, summary of the stress uh, of, of, of the stress uh, re results of uh, shear capacity and flexure results so basically a, a, a complete uh, summary of your ULS checks at one go 
so this is how it looks like uh, if I just activate this one so this the shaded portion is the applied moment whereas the non shaded areas the lines represent the capacities or the moment of resistance okay, so if the solid portion the shaded portions are more than this value that means we need to provide we need to revise the size of the section or maybe revise the revise the pre-stressing detail okay now moving on to the pretension bit uh, so pretension bridges so in pre-stress pretension bridges uh, like the ones we have over here uh, we have to be we have few other things that to be kept in mind uh, first is that whatever losses that have happened before the concrete becomes composite before the slab becomes composite uh, the same losses will not happen after that so losses will change because section properties have changed and also uh, because of the extra self weight of of the slab itself the creep and creep deformations will change okay uh, so uh, here again we need to define shear reinforcement uh, for both torsion and uh, for the shear check okay uh, so what we do here is uh, we define one one extra th extra bit here which is shear connector because apart from the shear check uh, that we do over in the overall section we need to check the shear at the junction of the slab and the uh, and the girder so for that we define uh, the type of the surface rough smooth or very smooth and the angle of the resisting reinforcement around that area so around that interface area what is the resisting reinforcement in the transverse direction so aw is the transverse direction lateral direction as well as the longitudinal direction okay, and the diameter of the rebar so once we put this uh, and uh, we, we define the, st the strength of or the grade of the rebar there that's sufficient enough to carry out the check for shear at the interface so let's have a look at uh, what kind of uh, results we get for a u-beam type u-beam bridge so that's the uh, section drawn over here the dots look represent the pre-stressed tendon uh, location or the strand locations okay so the rest of the uh, features are same uh, pre-stressing forces are calculated at each level uh, using the con concept of pre-strain plus the total strain due to compatibility Okay, and uh, MRD is calculated based on the neutral axis location then we move on to next bit which is shear resistance so under shear resistance uh, we can calculate the shear interface so check shear at the interface between concrete cast at different times so we can get the shear stress out and compare it with the um, the shear capacity okay so design shear resistance at the in interface is calculated as per this equation Okay, and that's how the the composite type of pre-stress uh, concrete bridges are dealt with okay so moving on to serviceability checks so for serviceability checks uh, uh, the stress checks for uh, various uh, parts are done in the software automatically so stress check for compression um, a stress check for uh, I mean for compression in concrete stress checks for um, the tension uh, in concrete so uh, this uh, miss mistyping over here it should be tension stress checks for tension in concrete uh, is also also done as I was mentioning in case of post tension and pre tension there are different um, different uh, values of the tension limit even in case of the type of construction so if it's a cast in situ or precast segmental construction uh, bonded or unbonded tendons uh, the tension limit will change then stress checks for pre-stress tendons immediately at anchorages okay stress checks for pre-stress tendons immediately 
elsewhere apart from anchorages and then there is a final uh, allowable stress in tendon at service limit state which is after all losses okay and then there's a principal stress check which is done at uh, any one any location on the um, on the section so in the software uh, the principal stress is calculated at uh, by by using 10 different stress points okay right so so let's have a look at the uh, um, at the stress checks so we move on to this check stresses for construction stages so we have FTFP so this is basically top bottom left right all stress points are checked for each construction stage as well as for the service stage okay similarly principal stresses at service loads so sigma 1 2 3 p1 p2 p3 Okay, P6 up to P10, so 10 different stress points. To locate the stress points, um, you can always have a look at uh, the section property itself. So if you just uh, <coughs> right click on any section, uh, the default stress points will always have at the four corners, plus you will have six other stress points at the location where the section is cut. Uh, and these lines are cutting so you can define this z1 z2 and z3 from here so by default it is auto which is basically at the junction of the web and the flange but you can always change it to some other value so stress points will be calculated over there okay and then finally uh, to sum up uh, the the design checks we have crack width checks. So crack width checks are done for frequent load combinations. Now wherever we are we are allowing for tension in the concrete, we need to check whether the reinforcement dia and the tendon dia is sufficient to resist the cracks in the concrete. So the way crack width is calculated is basically we have uh, this equation SR max and the difference between the strain mean strain of uh, re tension tensile zone reinforcement and the dif and the strain in the concrete surrounding the tension the tension zone so that is calculated as per this equation okay and then finally uh, we compare it with the uh, we, when we get the crack width from this equation we compare it with the crack width limit defined by the exposure class of concrete okay which is shown over here right and that's how crack width will be calculated so the software also does crack width check which is so shown here check crack width at service loads okay so once you define the serviceability combination so it should be frequent combination and exposure class needs to be defined so it will do the combined uh, sorry crack width check so in this case since uh, everything was in compression so it, the crack width check was not necessary um, which you can also extract from the full uh, the full record of uh, the full detail and I'll uh, check of the design so which looks like this so for crack width it says uh, calculate crack width uh, stress at top surface is compression compression so crack width check is skipped Okay, so that brings us to the end of the presentation today. I uh, hope we were able to cover most of the things re relevant for pre-stress concrete design uh, using Midas Civil. Uh, for any uh, queries or for a pre-spoke pre demonstration, please contact the Midas UK support team. Contact details are shown over here. Um, okay, so bye for now. Thank you.